Good morning and welcome to St Aidan's, our church in a very different way. We're going to try and encourage everybody today by having a service in a simple format to help us get closer to the Lord and to one another, despite the situation we're in. Let me just open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that you are the eternal God, the rock of all ages, the ancient of days. We thank you that underneath us are the everlasting arms. And we thank you that even in this difficult time, we are able to meet together in a different way, to truly worship you, to meet with you, and to know that you are sovereign and that you provide. So as we meet today, as we worship you, join us together by the power of your love, by the work of your spirit, by the grace of the Lord Jesus, and by our faith in you. I ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. And now let us just introduce ourselves to worship. Let us worship God, who has done great things. We We rejoice in our God, who made a way through the desert of this world. Let us worship God, who has caused streams of mercy to flow in the wasteland. We are the people God has formed through Christ. We worship him and we rejoice. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. We praise God for the grace that has saved us. Hallelujah, we rejoice. Indeed, we rejoice. And now our opening hymn, In Christ Alone.
And now the Gospel of Christ, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love one another. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's take a moment to pray, shall we? Lord God, thank you so much that no matter what, you are with us at home, at church, wherever we are that uh, your word says you will never leave us or abandon us. And if ever we needed you close by, it is a time like this. Pray that you will bless the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts to be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, if you were here, I would tell you you can sit down now, but you're not here, most of you. So, so one of the things that I love about St. Aidan's, I love our community of St. Aidan's. I love the fellowship that we have here. I love the fact that people hang around after church, drinking coffee and chatting together until someone comes and flips the lights off and then it's kind of like, oh, I guess we really have to go now. And I love the fact that we care about each other and we show it in all kinds of ways. And now at this time, when we can't meet together, it just brings back to my mind that uh, song by Joni Mitchell who said, you know, you don't know what it's, what, no, what did it go now? Oh, you never know what you've got till it's gone. And when it's gone, you really, really miss it. There's a Facebook meme that said that we look forward to a time when we can go into a store and there's, the shelves are filled. We can come to church, we can shake hands, we can actually shake hands, we can actually hug each other, we can sit close to each other, right? But in the meantime, in the meantime, we still have to find a way to love each other, even though we can't be together physically, or at least most of us can't be anyway. It's at this time when we discover that that old saying about church not being a building is true. Church is much more than meeting together in a building. As beautiful and as comforting as it is to meet together in a building. A church, that's not what we're really about. And so the challenge is for all of us to be able to love each other and stay in community even though we can no longer meet. 
You know, um, many years ago, we were at an airport actually in St. John, New Brunswick, and we were watching the arrivals of people coming off the planes. And there was a young family, and they had their little girl. She might have been about two or a little more than that, but just little. She was in a stroller, and they pushed her into the arrival section, and her grandparents were waiting for her. Well, those grandparents, each of them grabbed her hands, and they were kissing her hands, they were kissing her arms, and at first she was kind of shy. I kind of wonder if maybe this family lived quite a ways apart from them, but, but these grandparents just smothered this child with love, and, and the little girl just picked it up, and her face just started to shine, and she looked back at her mom and dad. Well, you know, not very long ago, Deb Hall told a story to the kids in Sunday school at the Children's Blessing, and she talked about the fact that God wants to lavish us with his love. And I think of it this way. She used all kinds of, well, Deb being Deb, she used all kinds of, you know, pearls and necklaces and stuff like that and draped it all over a child just to give us some kind of a physical example of what it is to have that kind of love just poured out over us. But, you know, I kind of like to think of it this way, is that God wants to soak us in his love. It's like there's a river of his love that he wants to pour into our hearts so that we can leak it everywhere we go. We can just show that love to everyone. And you know, at this time, how do we do that? We've been uh, thinking about that challenge. All of us have been thinking about that challenge of how we still love each other, even though we can no longer meet. We phone each other. Some of us are able to do video chatting. Some of us are able to deliver soup or groceries or that kind of thing. So we learn to take care of each other in these perilous times. We pray for each other. And we seek God. We seek him in our heart of hearts so that he's not a distant God. You know, scripture tells us that God so loved this world that he sent his only son into this world so that all that believe in him won't perish. We won't lay there dead forever, but no, we will have eternal life. That's how much God loves us. And that's just one example of how much he loves us. Of course, the main example is is that. But you know, he loves us in so many other ways, and it's interesting to know that many of the ways are things that we can still do, even on our own. We can read our scriptures, and we have time. Most of us have time to read our scriptures now. We don't have that excuse of having to rush out the door so much anymore. And those of us who are, you know, a little bit technologically able know all about the Bible apps and all about the online devotions and all that jazz. That's one way we can know God's love. And the other way is to take time, and we have time, to pray for each other, to pray for all those in authority. I just think of people in our governments who are struggling to make the very best use of the resources at hand. I think of people in stores who are on the front lines of people who are coughing and they are still at their stations stocking shelves and taking our money at the till. I think of people on the front lines in hospitals, in emergency rooms, doctor's offices, 
people who are driving trucks full of groceries that we desperately need. All those things that we used to just take for granted. Well, you know, I'm sick, I'm gonna go to emergency and someone there will just look after me. It'll still happen, but it'll be pretty different from the way we're used to. No, another way that we can know God's love is by being in touch with those who love us, taking time to make the phone calls. We can't visit like we would love to, but we can take that time. And, and we can know that God loves us by thinking about him and meditating on him, reading those psalms. You know, um, years ago, I heard someone talk. There was a, a Church of the Nazarene pastor in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, who had been stricken by West Nile virus. And he was so ill. He ended up in intensive care. He was that ill. And he lost so much of his memory and everything. And finally he turned to his wife and said, I don't know who I am. And she said, well, what do you know? And this is what he replied. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. That just really touched my heart. And I hope it touches yours. And I hope you always remember how much God loves you, how much Jesus loves you. And I hope that as we develop ways of showing that love to others in these trying times, that you may be nourished and blessed in so many ways. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please sit or kneel at home however you are comfortable for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, in light of this time of the unknown, help us to love one another as you have commanded. In these days where global fear and anxiety are on the increase due to the pandemic spread of coronavirus, and the exponential growth of locusts, disease, and famine. We look to our sovereign Lord God for refuge, consolation, intervention, wisdom, cure, and provision. We know from scripture and experience that God acts differently when we pray. We believe that he not only hears our prayers, but that he uses people like our leaders, scientists, and medical professionals to accomplish his will. We pray that God would grant them wisdom, insight, and strength in these coming days. We pray that in this time, people will call on Jesus in their pain and suffering and worries and find the rest and hope that only he can provide. Globally, we pray for all the nations we pray that all the nations will repent of their sins and ask for God's forgiveness. We pray for God's intervention to spread, to stop the spread of the virus, and for God's healing for those who are sick. Lord, we pray for your miraculous provision for the hungry. And Lord, may you use us, your people, as agents of your love and compassion. May you draw people to yourself through
through the saving power of your Son on the cross. Locally here in Winnipeg, we pray for the protection of all those on the front lines, paramedics, medical professionals, bus drivers, anyone who is still servicing the city. We pray for discernment for all those who have to make decisions. No decision is popular, but you pray for your discernment, Lord. We pray for wisdom for all those working towards a fast and speedy cure for this illness. Lord God, for all of us here at St. Anne's, we pray in this time of silence and solitude that many will hear your voice more clearly. May we find rest in this time from our busy lives. We pray that we will understand our need for you in this time. And may we hand over our over-reliance on worldly mechanisms that are just so, so fragile. We pray that many will look to you in this time, Jesus. May many in our communities and our cities give their hearts to you. May your church be ready to receive and help those who call on your name and who are seeking comfort, community, and love in this strange time. Love is no greater than you, Lord. You laid down your life for us. May we, in this time of uncertainty, take huge steps forward in love for others, doing so in the certainty of your word and promises, empowered by your love for us. Amen. Continuing in prayer, we come to our confession. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us share the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. We'll now have our second hymn. And we're going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God our Father, great indeed is your faithfulness. Morning by morning may we see the new mercies that you bring to us. May your hand provide all that we need. May we praise you, Lord, for your great faithfulness unto us. Amen. I hope and pray uh, this morning has blessed you. I hope and pray it keeps you close to us as a family of God and that it gives you great joy at this difficult time. May I encourage you to put your trust and your faith in God, to look after one another and to know the depth of God's love and provision for us. May I also encourage you to keep an eye on our website and on our email communication with you. We will post dates and times of other services that we will be putting online. And also we will let you know how you can help one another pastorally, perhaps delivering food to one another, perhaps just simply phoning and praying over the phone. And we will be working to coordinate that from next week onwards. So please keep in touch and keep your finger on the pulse. May I close with a prayer and a blessing. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Make our minds speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies with the life that is Christ within us. In his holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And a blessing. May the God of love who shared his love strengthen us in our love for others. May the Son who shared his life grant us grace that we may share our lives. And may the Holy Spirit dwelling in us empower us to be only and always for others. And may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. So if you have shakers at home,